Hi and welcome to 3D Print Tech Design. Today we are going to print, test, iterate a design that will hold up my studio lights. Buying finished spigots you say? 40 bucks for two? Nah, that's not 3D printing. We can't do that. So let's get going. So the challenge in this project is really to achieve a strong spigot that allows us to use the standard lighting mechanism around a cylinder which then allows us to rotate the light around that cylinder. And there's a, like a, a clamping mechanism that has a screw pretty tight on that um, cylinder, so this needs to be pretty strong. We also need to have a design that is strong enough to actually be mounted onto the wall and have a distance going out so the actual spigot is a distance away from the wall, which creates a lot of load on certain parts of the design. So we only have 16 millimeters in diameter, which is pretty small. Not only that, that force is, needs to be in an angle, and we also have this really tiny tightening screw that uh, clamps on one particular spot. So there's a few different levels on where we need to strengthen this part. So my first plan was to print everything laying down and um, achieving strength by using the shells and the layers of the, of the print. Um, if we can achieve like a 90 degree of rotation, that should be fine because I won't twist the lights even more than that. Uh, if that all works, we can then add the rest of the design stiffening things up. But I think that we should test this basic concept first to see if we can achieve the strength. We should also make some prints actually to confirm what most of us 3D printer users already know, which is that you get the most strength in X, Y and not in Z. So I will actually print one of the wrong directions as well, just to see how much difference we have in, in strength in those parts. Before we start printing, we need a design, so let's quickly draw something up. It's based on the same measurements as the original spigot, so there's no surprises here. I'll use some standard print printing settings at first to get a base value of the strength. Uh, so we'll start with around 20% infill and two or maybe three shells. For the fun of it, let's start with the weird print orientation and see how that holds up. And by the way, this is my temporary test equipment. I have ordered parts for like building a, a really scientific measurement station a la CNC kitchen, but I haven't had the time to do that yet. So if we put these on the lights, you can see that, of course, the, the one printed in the C direction kind of cracks directly. It's not, not really a surprise. It's not very strong when you separate uh, the, uh, or when you load the force so that the layers want to be torn apart. So next up we printed in a correct orientation where we have the X and Y uh, solid lines of the shells going in the X and Y layer, um, absorbing most of the strength, achieving a much stronger print in the direction of the load. However, it might not be as strong in side, side loads. So you see the result is really good, um, but it might not hold up for some real world scenarios where um, yeah, I put some extra load in it or hang something next. You can see it does break, but not really uh, too bad. So let's go back and change some of the settings. So to get more stiffness in the same design and everything, let's just bump up the settings to 40% infill and around four layers. Um, we're using a little bit more plastic, a little bit more time, but as you can see here from this test, the part is much, much stronger. We can't really break it. Um, I was putting probably five or seven extra kilos of weight and it still didn't break. So that should give us a good safety margin for when we leave these up for a while. So another thing that I wanted to try out was to actually uh, reinforce this part with a screw. So I have uh, taken the same design, I've added a screw in here, an M3 pretty, lo pretty long one. Uh, it does two things. First of all, it adds more shells. By having a hole inside, we add three or four shell layers, which in the direction of the print makes it more stronger without the screw. And then we add the screw as well to 
add some stiffness into here and my plan was if we if we found like a screw that was a bit bigger um, you could all the forces of the uh, clamping mechanism where where the screw really pushes hard here um, you would absorb some of that by having the screw inside uh, I printed this and you can see it's really stiff as well we can't really break it and if it breaks it's gonna break further in I can really feel how it doesn't flex in this area but it flexes more around here so from the broken parts we can get some data we can see where it's the weakest so for example when we do our next design where we make this actually wall mountable and not zip tie mountable uh, we can actually try to reinforce this area so with that said let's go ahead and design that and then we put it on the printer And here it is, printed and ready, a wall mount. You can see that the screws are a bit offset and that is to help with some uh, side loads to uh, yeah, well, help it a little bit when not attaching it. I want to keep it pretty narrow because I don't want it to be too visible. It's a pretty simple but clever design. So this screw hole, for example, will help with extra layers in the XY direction. And yeah, other than that, we, I'm not using the screw inside. If I need to, I will add that in the design. So the design is still pretty simple. I mean, you could do it more organic and beautiful and like that, but I'm not really sure how well the PLA will work like over a few months. I don't have any UV light here, so we shouldn't have any issues with that. But yeah, putting static stress on something might uh, change the way it behaves compared to when you break it on the test stand. Um, so we'll start with this design and uh, yeah, will it hold? Will it not? Find out in the next episode of Low Eye. Leave your entries in. No, I'm kidding. Um, probably in a few weeks or so. Actually, uh, during the night I printed one in PETG on the other side, so it's mirrored. So uh, just gonna be a comparison over time if one of them behave better. To mount everything, I'm using my Bosch laser that makes a laser cross. It works, it's a good helper. And then I just put some screws in. And it's ready to hold the light. It even works. <laughs> Only thing left is to fix the cable. Yeah, so now the lights are on the walls. I have more floor space to clutter and you have seen me destroy some PLA prints. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, ring that bell and maybe in the future I'll make a proper test machine for filament. That would be pretty nice to have actually. So uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe, like this video, share it with anyone you think might like it. And I'll see you guys next week in a new video. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>